It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therat is here. Mary Jo Foley is there. They're going to battle, battle over <laughs> the Courier tablet, over whether Xbox uh, is going to have a new version, and a whole lot more. We've got a great show planned for you. Make sure you stay tuned. Windows Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 233, recorded November 3rd, 2011. Connect this. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Go to Assist Express. Being in IT and not using the right tools can be disastrous. That's why you need Go to Assist Express, the leader in remote support. Try it free. Visit gotoassist.com/windows. And by Ford, featuring voice-activated sync app link. Now you can control select smartphone apps with your voice, so you keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Check it out in the 2012 Ford Fiesta and at ford.com/technology. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show that covers your Microsoft needs in great obsessive depth. Here they are, our Windows Weekly duo, the dynamic duo of Microsoft knowledge. Are you on scratching my chin? On the left... From Mandalay Bay, this feels like a uh, a boxing event. Weighing <laughs> in, at God only knows, twenty pounds less than it was. Here, actually, this, sure, this weekend there's, there's a big fight. There's always a big fight, and Mandalay Bay is one of the one of the big venues. Uh, Mr. Paul Therat of Windows SuperSite, SuperSite for Win, SuperSite for Windows, WinSuperSite dot com. Uh, author of Windows Phone Secrets, so he's a real great expert on Windows Phone, and uh, always, always a joy and a pleasure to hang out with. <laughs> 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 to his right. I have no problem with anything you've said so far. I'll check, 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 check. <laughs> Mary Jo Foley of uh, ZDNet Blogs and uh, AllAboutMicrosoft.com. And we are here to talk about the latest news from Redmond. Actually, the news today is from Helsinki. Close enough. It, where is actually is Nokia in, uh, in Finland? Yes. So it would be Helsinki. The windows. Although they had their event in, in London. Yeah. It's Mary Jo knows. And their president is from the U.S. Canada. Can well, oh, Canada. Canada. That's oh, great. I know he's a Microsoft, former Microsofty. Yep. Yeah, but he's a Canuck. He's a Canuck. So uh, he's announced that Windows phone handsets in the U.S. will be coming when, Paul Theron? <laughs> oh, did they announce that? I, I don't know. Didn't they? <laughs> Please? <laughs> well, so I want my Lumia 800. <laughs> You know what I want, actually, is not the Lumia 800, but an improved version of the Lumia 800. I'd, I'd like to see them address some of the complaints that people have about that. You know, that it only comes with 16 gigs of storage. There's no front-facing camera. There's no gyroscope, apparently. Uh, I think it's a, it's a nice, solid device. It's a beautiful-looking device, absolutely. And it, it is one of those things that's really high-quality, uh, you know, look and feel to it. But, um, God, I, I, all I get is complaints about this thing now, you know? And uh, it's not just that we can't get it immediately. It's that, you know, I think that combined with the fact that you can't get it immediately, people tend to dwell on the specs. And the more they dwell on the specs, the more idgity they get about the things that are missing, you know. So I'm kind of, I don't know, Mary Jo, if you caught any wind of this, but there's some mystery about whether that's the device or one of the devices is coming to the U.S. And if so, whether it will be a modified version or just the, uh, the original one. Yeah, I've I've been hearing that too. And when when we asked last week at uh, Nokia World, they would not say for sure that the Lumia 800 is what's going to come to the U.S. And I'm I'm thinking no. I mean, they're definitely I would think going to add a front-facing camera if it's not, you know, if if the device is until next year. Um, and then there have been a couple of reviews coming out this week of uh, the Lumia 800, kind of saying the camera is okay, but not like the amazing thing that you thought it was going to be because of of Nokia's camera expertise. Yeah, Nokia set the expectation. Right. 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 And then even the name. I mean, doesn't the name sound like a camera, the Lumia? Well, Lumia? It ha but it has Carl Zeiss optics. Yeah. You know, it has a, 
a better, uh, I don't know what the correct term is, like an f-stop or a uh, aperture yeah, setting. A faster aperture, yeah, yeah, yeah. 2.2. Um, 2. Right, so we've all been kind of pinning our hopes on this because, uh, you know, one of the things I've determined, I, I bought a point-and-click camera this past year and, and sort of vowed that this will be the last yeah. camera I buy. You know, that I fully expect within the next, you know, 6 to 12 months to be able to buy any camera, or I'm sorry, any, you know, high-end smartphone and have that camera be good enough, yes. you know. It's, you uh, know, it's iPhone, interesting. That's, that's why that's, one, one of the reasons Apple uh, did the iPhone, I'm reading the Steve Jobs bio, and they talk about this, is because um, it, people were going to stop using uh, cameras. They were going to stop using iPods. It was all going to be in the phone, and they didn't. And they ne realized they needed to have be in that space. That the, they when they in 2007 they saw this coming. Yeah. And of course, yeah, cameras and, have and, gotten and, so good now. Right, and it's amazing because you know these are very thin devices. The, the camera optics have to be tiny, um, and yet, you know, and yet some of them are very good. My understanding is that uh, I think it's the HTC Titan has an excellent camera, and of course the iPhone 4S does. I think some of the uh, the new Droid phones that have oh, they're all eight, eight megapixels, megapixels. Yeah, up, yeah, yeah, uh, probably are okay. I've not really tested any of those. They are. I, know I would say they're. Uh, you know, I have the um, Galaxy Two S Two, and it's uh, on a par with the iPhone. It the, is the thing uh, that the thing that makes it's these very important. Oh yeah, and and because you have software and connectivity in this device, you've got a GPS, you've got you're, you're and online, and you got I'd, software. I'd rather have a good camera than a good phone, in the in the phone. In the phone, if that makes I agree. sense. In other words, well, I would put up with crappy phone calls if that camera was excellent. Welcome to my. And I know world, that's Paul. not the trade off, but I mean. <laughs> Welcome to would, iPhone no, but, 4 ownership. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's, that's welcome to smartphone ownership. I yeah. mean, a lot of smartphones are not great phones. That's just the way it is. You know, yeah. the iPhone, by and large, has never been a great phone, although my experience with this, the newest one is actually very good. So maybe this one is bucking the trend. But um, like, but anyway, I, I it, for me, you know, out and about in the world, I don't really talk to people on the phone a lot. Uh, and when I do, it's for a very short period of time. It, the other functionality... You know, its ability to do the locations and stuff and the check-ins and, you know, and the camera stuff is, is more important to me. And I think it is to other people as well. Well, you know, I didn't realize that the Lumia was... But I, I think you're right. I think maybe we're going to benefit f from having Lumia 800 Part 2 in the U.S. in uh, 2012. Maybe that's why so. they were delaying. Maybe they wanted to do this. Maybe. I mean, the one, the one that everyone thinks is going to be in the U.S. is the Lumia 710, which is the lower end right. of the two yeah. models that they introduced. And that'll be, and, you mean before the end of the year? Um, no, next year also. We may not get the 800? The 710. We may not get the 800, but see, right. we know that we're going to get multiple phones on multiple carriers, so it won't just be the 710. It will be right. the 710 plus something else. They can't, they can't, Some other thing. How could they not do the 800 in the U.S.? Well, more important, how could they not be clear about what they are doing? Yes. You know? I mean, <laughs> surely they know about now. If right, I, I just no. If they don't do the eight hundred, they'll do the nine hundred or something, right? I mean, yeah. it, they're they're going to have a the high end phone for the yeah. U.S. Okay. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Nine hundred. The question nice. is yeah. whether it is literally an eight hundred or a modified version of the eight hundred, or got it, got it. something completely new. So. I mean, there was that whole rumor about the Ace, you know, which was another Nokia phone supposedly. Um, that was bigger, bigger screen, I think, um, and had some more business functionality. So that might be, you know, what takes the place in the U.S. of the 800. We just don't know what they're going to have in the U.S. I find I find this uncertainty to be very uncertain. Disturbing, yes, you know, that's what I don't like. I don't like the lack of clarity. I, I had hoped that Nokia World would come and go, and it would answer the questions, and it answered some of the questions, of course, um, but not all of the questions. I, I, I think that Nokia probably is going to come to the U.S. market with some of those other phones, too. I don't remember the branding on them, but the, uh, the S40 the phones. Asha. They just know. Asha, yeah. Asha, I mean, those, yeah. Look, those look nice. Um, I don't know if there's a place in the U.S. market for that. I mean, we, but I assume there is. I mean, I, I, you know, I tend to focus on smartphones personally, but um, I'm sure there's a market for lower-end phones that do a lot of the same stuff, you know, have Facebook and uh, a nice web browser and all that and uh, email capabilities and so forth. So, um, you know, hopefully we'll yeah, see I that. Asked, too. I asked at the show about those. You know, I, yeah. I went up to the booth where they were showing them and said, what, are these going to come to the U.S. too? Because it would make a lot of sense. And they just weren't yeah, we ready to answer. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I just don't like that. I just wish there was more certainty there. Too many mysteries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe they are beholden to the wireless carriers. That it, Maybe it's AT&T and Verizon and so forth that, that they want that chance to announce uh, stuff. I have been told that we can expect the uh, uh, Nokia U.S. plans to be announced at CES, by the way. Oh, good. 
We're going to do Windows Weekly from CES. Are you going to be there? You know, I wasn't going to be there, but I'm thinking now that I will go. Yes, uh, you must go. And Mary Jo, you must go. And we must all go. Come, we must going. all convene. It is the gathering. I Las Vegas. Oh. Not, I go as seldom as possible oh, to Las Vegas. Come on. Las Sorry, Vegas. All I, Las Vegas. Listen. Las Vegas I get to I go you. to Vegas like four times a year at least. I can't, I can't. I can't escape Vegas. We're not allowed to hate Vegas. Even if we did, we're not allowed to. I'm going to Vegas on uh, Monday. Actually, you'll be in New York on Monday because the Mango event is uh, Monday in New York City, right, Paul? Yeah, I, I'm not clear what the event is exactly. My understanding is that it's uh, possibly an AT&T launch event where um, they, they launch those U.S. phones, possibly only on AT&T. I'm not, again, not a lot of clarity here. So there is a Windows phone event uh, in New York on Monday. I'm going. Men and and Mary Jo is going. Who's throwing this yep. event? Yep. Microsoft. So it's a Microsoft yeah. event, not a Samsung or HTC or Verizon. Or it's a Microsoft right. event. All right. Yep. And you know, I think I think it's got to be more than just an AT and T launch because they're they're bringing Andy Lee's, who's the president of Windows Phone, to this event, and they're also bringing Joe Belfiore, you know, who's the corporate VP in charge of Windows Phone. So if it were yep. just you know, hey, we're launching AT and T, we already told you about the phones, so it would be kind of a waste for them to come for that event. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see. Maybe yeah. Microsoft's going to announce tablets. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I, uh, uh, no. No, no. <laughs> There's another great story in the Jobs biography of uh, uh, going to a birthday party. Uh, I guess it was a friend of a friend who worked at Microsoft on the tablets. Bill Gates and Steve yep. Jobs are both there at this dinner party. And the guy whose party it is starts telling Steve Jobs about Microsoft's tablet plans. And, and uh, Gates is quoted as saying, <laughs> he's giving us, he's giving away our intellectual, I don't know why I didn't stop him. I mean, he's the boss. He could have said, uh, shut up. But yeah, apparently yeah. this guy, this is the 10th or 11th time that this guy has harangued Jobs about, hey, you should license our tablet. The tablet's going to be great. And of course, what's the reaction? What's the response? Stops, Jobs starts thinking, maybe we should do a tablet. What a mistake. They don't say the name of this guy, but I got to think that he is just, <laughs> his ears is burning. We'll talk about tablets in just a second. We are uh, talking, of course, about Windows and Redmond and Microsoft and all of that with the two of the experts, the experts in the field, Mary Jo Foley from allaboutmicrosoft.com and Paul Therott from the Supersite for Windows, winsupersite.com. Before we go much farther, can I tell you about our barbecue? You, you may not like Vegas, but you really should come out here to beautiful downtown Petaluma and take a look at our, uh, at our uh, setup. Let me see if I can find that. Where's the... Uh, there, where's the lower third for this? <laughs> I'm going through them all. It's here somewhere. There it is. Whew, that was a... That was a what's going on? Paul just shot somebody. Oh, good. <laughs> Sorry. I think he shot somebody. I took care of that problem. <laughs> it, was, it was that guy you were just talking about in the tablet blabber. I heard the gunshot. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going <laughs> to... Let's edit all that out, right? No, if you're seeing this, you, we didn't edit it out. Uh, we were talking about Ford. We're going to have some barbecues uh, uh, a week from Sunday, the 13th of November. And uh, then Sunday, December 4th, you're invited. If you can make it to the Petaluma area, starting at 1.30 on the Sunday afternoon, we've got a tent. We've got permits from the city so we can block off part of the street. Ford's going to bring vehicles so you can take a look at some of these amazing Ford vehicles. Uh, and we're just going to have a blast. You can come. You can watch uh, the, the end of the Tech Guy show uh, the twit, and we're gonna. Uh, that will be the first time that we've assembled the cast and uh, staff for our new gaming show, Game On, with Brian Belmont and Veronica Brushwood. No, that's wrong. Uh, they'll both, Brian and Veronica, will be there, and we'll be. I don't think we're gonna actually do a show. I think we're just gonna be rehearsing and, and trying stuff, so you could be part of the kind of the genesis, the work that goes into making a brand new show. This should be a lot of fun. Uh, and, of course, you have to request tickets because there will be some demand for this. I think we only have room for about 50 people. So go to our website, twit.tv. You'll see a link there to request tickets. And uh, pick the date, the 14th of this, uh, sorry, the 13th of this month, the 4th of next month. And while you're there, you know, you're going to see these amazing, uh, you know, Ford Sync, the uh, My Ford Touch, these amazing vehicles. Ford just announced that they're going to start taking orders in some dealerships for the 2012 uh, electric Focus is a car I've been waiting for. Oh, I'm so excited. So excited. Of course, it'll have 
the voice activated sync in there. That's that's you know you talk about Siri. This is like I've been for years since I bought my Mustang in what two thousand nine or two thousand ten. This is I've been talking to my car, and I'm not crazy. The car actually does what I say. It, you could set the cabin temperature. You could say where's the nearest gas station. You could say uh, play the Rolling Stones. You can say. Uh, navigate to and it, by the way uh, you know I keep using GPS's and other cars and they're just terrible this one is great this is it's they've just done a good job now with the new app link that is part of the new Ford sync they've got an API for apps so you can control your smartphone e Android iPhone and let me check because I would guess that that would include a Windows phone because after all the sync technology is based on Microsoft's car platform uh, you can talk to your phone and say things like, open Pandora, PlayStation Classic Rock, bookmark this song, thumbs down on this song, thumbs up on this song, all without taking your hands off the wheel, your eyes off the road. You just press the sync button and you speak to it. They also have a Stitcher if you like to listen to podcasts like this one. You can play Windows Weekly. You don't have to even have downloaded it ahead of time. It'll play it. Uh, open Beak will, will read your tweets to you. I mean, this thing is incredible. Check out all of the new technologies, the latest stuff that Ford is putting in their vehicles at Ford.com slash technology. It is truly amazing. Let me look at the app link. They say here, I think it's, I don't know if it's Windows Phone. Um, it is uh, Android 2.1 Plus, iPhone 3GS or later. Blackberry is the latest available Blackberry OS. How could they do that? We got to get them. We got to get the Windows Phone support in here. That's a love for the Windows Phone. Ford.com slash technology. Do check out their amazing engines that give you performance to die for, but still great fuel economy. Of course, the hybrids, and I'm so excited about the electric. I can't wait to get my electric focus. The Bliss uh, warning system with cross-traffic alert, the active park assist, the adaptive cruise control, and on and on and on. Technology is number one at Ford, and I think these vehicles are so great. Take a look, Ford.com slash technology or your local Ford dealer. And don't forget our barbecue coming up a week from Sunday. Go to twit.tv and click the link to uh, sign up. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley are here. We are talking uh, about Microsoft, of course. And uh, is it possible Nokia will be doing Windows 8 tablets? Paul, you say it is. Well, it's possible. <laughs> Anything's possible. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you don't think so. They've they've left it open uh, as a possibility. That he commented publicly on uh, some interesting stuff that Microsoft is doing with Windows 8 and tablets, and didn't uh, say outright that they were not looking into doing that. Um, Would Nokia you know, be no a good partner for this, as opposed to a PC well, I, manufacturer? Yeah, in the sense that Windows PCs are sort of uh, sort of melding into what Microsoft calls Win Windows devices. And if you accept the fact that Windows 8 will be the basis for some future version of Windows Phone, um, yeah, I think it makes some sense. I mean, I think a Windows tablet, especially an ARM-based tablet, has as much to do with a smartphone as it does to do with a traditional yep. Windows PC. So, yeah, I, I think that's something that might be of interest to them. I, I would point out that Nokia did make a netbook a few years back that uh, didn't sell particularly well. So um, they do have some history there. Um, that didn't go, you know, extremely well for a Nokia. But this is a different kind of market, a different kind of product. So I, I, I could see that happening. Yes, that's an interesting point. Is that uh, these tablets are, cl are more akin to the phones? They're consumer electronics devices more than computers. Yeah, it's a. Uh, Plus, I, if you if you think about, you know, how much money did Microsoft pay Nokia um, to do the whole licensing deal? And you, it makes me wonder. You know, maybe they also said, hey, and since we're paying you billions of dollars. You gotta do our, do one of our tablets. Could, too. You, could you do a tablet? Could you just yeah. do it? <laughs> just do, do, you think, do you think it in the contract it literally says do us a solid? <laughs> Come on, yeah. we gave you a billion. Do us a yeah. solid. Make a tablet. What is? What could it hurt? It's just a big phone. Yeah, yeah it really is. It yeah. Kind of is. Yeah. Would the tablet? I guess it would run Windows 8 though, not the Windows Phone right. interface. Right, so right, that right. makes it more like a PC. What do you think? Yeah. I don't know if it's in here. I didn't. I didn't I'm really looking at these, um, the Asus, the Acer, the ultralight mobile uh, yeah. computers. I think these are really beautiful. Mm -hmm. They don't seem to be selling all that well, though. Oh, they're still... They're, Is it they're too early? 
one of the things that Intel was very upfront about was that there were going to be three generations of this chipset over the over a year, yeah. and that the very first version that comes out, you know, and, and that's the devices we see today, are running what is essentially an early version of a chipset that's going to get much thinner and much smaller and much more, um, you know, power efficient and so forth. So I, I think by this time next year, we're going to see machines that run a gamut of sizes and shapes and they'll all be wafer thin and all that kind of stuff. And I think we'll have more of a choice, but I, it's just early yet. I mean, I, you know, I, I, one of the themes I, I've discussed recently is this notion that people don't want something that looks just like something else, but isn't that thing. In other know? words, the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air in this case. That said, I think there are a lot of people in the Windows side of the fence who want a device like that, but they do want it to run Windows. And yeah, I, don't I think, think that's eventually, unreasonable. I, yeah, I don't, I don't see any reason why devices like this that cost in the uh, you know seven hundred to thousand dollar range can't sell very well. And I think they will over time. Even even at the show I'm at, and granted, this is a weird little Microsoft microcosm here, where uh, you go to a Microsoft oriented trade show and everyone around you has a Windows phone, and um, you know there aren't a lot of MacBooks, you know, like you would see. That with is the press. weird. Like, yeah, it's, it is weird, but, <laughs> but, I, but I've seen a couple of these Ultrabook style machines, as well as that Samsung Series 9, which is sort of a pre-Ultrabook, but very much like a MacBook Air in size and shape and weight and so forth. And uh, that, to me, is uh, telling in a way, because these guys are certainly influencers and would be the early adopter types, and th those are the machines I'm starting to see, not the big honking Dell laptops that everyone used to carry around. Right. So. Oh, I mean, I think when you travel, it is so nice to have a very oh, thin, it's, it's the best. very yeah. light computer. I just, I, you know, and it's you and know, a tablet won't do it. Yep. Right. I, I wonder though about the pricing on them. You know, like Paul's saying, uh, you know, that maybe the later generations will be more in the lower range. But right now, those ultrabooks are pretty expensive. And you know, Apple users, okay, they're they're more accepting of paying a premium. They're kind of used to that idea. But I think right. Windows users, because of what's been happening with Windows um, PC prices uh, in the past year or two, they're not used to paying the premium. And now when they see something, you know, 1500 sure. yikes. Well, yeah, know? I mean, the, the point of these devices is that they're supposed to top out of the $1,000. And that, of course, is not what's, is not what's happening. So I, I think it will happen over time. You know, we need to see... The main, you know, the big PC makers get into this market a little bit better, you know, Dell and HP and so forth. And I think, again, just like any other PC type, you're going to see a range of devices and you'll be able to choose between different price points. Is there one you guys like right now? Of the actual Ultrabooks? Yeah, the Acer, the Asus, no, the Samsung. I, you know, I've been look, I look at them. I, I, the, uh, Lenovo uh, announced something that it hasn't delivered yet that doesn't look particularly interesting to me. I would still buy like a ThinkPad X1 over that. Um, I look at the reviews. I pay a, a special attention to Laptop Magazine. I think they, they have the best uh, mobile device reviews. And so far, the ones that they've looked at, three and a half, maybe four stars, you know, yeah. they're not really at the top of the line. So not really. I mean, when I went to Europe uh, last month, I brought a MacBook Air. It had Windows on it. But for just for that reason, you said, you know, you want to travel light. And I just don't, I don't have a machine that the, other than that that is that small and light. So, um, you know, that's what I did. I, I'm not saying I, yeah. I wouldn't buy one, but. I still have my machine I bought a couple of years ago, which is an Asus, the UL38. Yeah. It was kind of like one of the first kind of going towards thin and lights um, that right. came out. And I, I've been really happy with it. Um, I, so I would bet on Asus again. I, I think they're making pretty nice machines right now. Yeah, that machine you have is striking, I know, because I, I always ask you about it. Yeah. <laughs> never always he, he always picks it up and says, what is this again? This is really neat looking, you know. <laughs> what is this? I'd like uh, one know. of those, yeah. 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 You, it's the same thing it was the last time you asked. You know. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, but it's not. And he it's tries nice, to run off with it. It's like know. when you see somebody say, are you losing weight? Did you get a haircut? <laughs> no, same. You look good. Yeah, same. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I've become a, a real fan of the ultralights. I don't feel the need for an optical drive. Um, no, I don't feel no. the need for huge hard drives, um, especially now that we're mo so cloud focused. Whether it's SkyDrive or iCloud or whatever, I, I think it's. Uh, I think I want to. I want to see bigger machines like that. There's a rumor now that Apple's doing a, a 15 inch version of a MacBook Air, huh. and I, I, that's the type of machine I want to see. I, w when you get down to a machine that is incredibly light and thin. That opens up the possibility of getting a bigger one, right? Because now you can have all that screen real estate, but you're right. still not being down the bag. Uh, that means a lot to me, and I, I would love to get uh, something of that screen size, but of the weight of a MacBook Air type. That's machine. a good point. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a really good point. Yeah.
So let's talk about Windows 8 uh, manufacturers. Um, Dell is on the list. Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, Windows 8 tablets, I should say. Mm -hmm. Dell is on the list. Asus is on the list. HP, I, I, now that they're back in the biz. Now that they're back. <laughs> we never left. Hello. <laughs> I'd like to know who the marketing genius was who said, let's pretend we're going to get rid of our PC business right before the holiday selling season. Oh, that's so stupid. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's almost like that guy, you know, what was his name? Leo Apotheker or whatever. Well, the that's guy who they did fight. it. Is that moron? I, I, I could picture him on his way out saying, wait, wait, wait. You wanted me to save the company? Oh. You know, it's, it's, like, it's like he didn't oh. get what he was doing. <laughs> I, I think, Not dismantle I, I think, it? Not yeah. uh, oh, <laughs> well, uh, oh, oh, it's a profit deal. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, he apparently um, didn't understand that very well. Yeah, you know, no, he was I, remaking I, the company and what he understood, which was services. And then uh, along comes uh, Meg Whitman and says, wait a minute. This is, you know what, it's interesting that she said uh, they did. They actually did the numbers. What, what a concept yeah, on the PC division. And when they, they didn't got, have to do that, but they didn't even have to do that. It was obvious. We already knew this thing made big money. It was obvious, but she did the like due diligence. And it took yeah. them three weeks to, to do yeah. all the spreadsheets. And they said, oh, lo and behold, not only is yeah. it a profitable division, but all our other divisions depend on it. it yeah. with, you know, that, we, it, that there is a, a ripple effect from all of the PC stuff into every part of our business, including printers, services, minis, business intelligence. It all comes from that. I guess we better keep it. Classic. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> It really gives you, it really inspires you with the power of corporate governance. These guys, yep. they're the best and the brightest. But don't you kind of wonder, okay, so they're, they're back, in, in, you know, back in the Windows business, but yes. what are they going to do for a tablet? You know, because like, well, well, they, what they're HP do has. They'll do what? So, by the way, I, I just yesterday got an email from HP. And this is the classic HP. HP is the most mismanaged company I, um, that I'm aware of. They're, they're just horrible. So they have a, a new version of that Slate PC. Remember this? Right. The, the, the yep. one they announced and then never said that they were selling, but they were selling it if you could find it on their website. And so there's a new version. <laughs> it's like, it's like a scavenger hunt. If you can find classic. it, you can so, buy it. It was the one that Steve Ballmer had held up that year at CES right. two years ago, right. right? Three years almost now. And then it sort of came out at the end of the year, but then they bought Palm and, oh, are they still going to do it and all that stuff. So the Slate 2 coming soon to a, to a website if you can find it near you. And I looked at this thing. I'm looking at the specs. It doesn't say anything about battery life. They talk about a laptop that gets 11 hours of battery life, but nothing on the, on the Slate. And I thought, well, this is kind of interesting. So I'll click on the link that they have to go learn more about it. And, of course, again, classic HP. It goes to a, a page on HP's website that's about some of their PCs but has no information at all about the Slate 2. So I think that's what you can expect from HP. <laughs> and Confusion. I I, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, they're just, it's, they're yeah. awful. They're just awful. Yeah. We'll, you know, you, go ahead. Marina. What was interesting this week that um, I caught, a couple of people had linked to this, is Asus accidentally, um, in their Q3 investor call, put out a slide deck that talked <laughs> yes. all about their Windows on ARM strategy. Oh, interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's like, okay, good. At least there's some people who are part of this. They're calling it WOA, Windows on ARM, the Windows on ARM Alliance. Whoa. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's hope there. And they, they actually said in their slide deck, we're going to have two products probably out by Q3 of 2012 that will be Windows on ARM. Do you think this is a recognition in the uh, Windows world that the tablet is really the future for the, of computing? I, it, I, it's funny you say that. Uh, I, the reason I'm here is I did a panel last night about Windows 8 and, and the weird resistance you get from the, the power users. And I, I, I had one slide literally one slide and it said it said simply you are the one percent right and, and what I meant by that <laughs> right was, good i love it brilliant what you don't understand is that the other 90 to 90 percent of the world 99 percent you know your your wives and spouses your children your grandparents and your parents all the normal people in the world want something simple right. they want something that just works and that if microsoft didn't make this bet right now if they didn't really go out on a limb and do something uh, completely different for them uh, that Windows might not matter at all two or three years from now. Yeah. And uh, I, it's, it's not so much that, I wouldn't say it so much as tablets are the future of computing, but rather that the simpler model of computing is the future of computing. And tablets will be one of those things. You know, phones will be one of those things. And there will still be traditional PCs and all that kind of stuff, you know, especially for content creators. But 
that most people need really simple stuff. They, need, they want Facebook, they want email and some light web browsing. And you can do that on anything. And, and it's not, we're not really living in a world now where, aside, and it's tough to have this conversation with you guys because you, like me, you know, we have very specific needs and very specific applications and so forth. But normal people and people who are coming up through the school system today rely on online services more than they rely on applications. The notion of installing things other than simple apps on, you know, on a phone or something is, is I think, in, in many ways going to go away. Um, my parents t get a PC today and it's complex for them, but they never do anything with it. And by anything, I mean they don't, inst they don't go look for apps. They don't do anything extra on it. They use whatever it came with. And I think for people like that, because my, you know, my parents are normal uh, people, just regular people, um, they don't need the complexity of Windows as it is today. All the goofy driver stuff you have to do in the Windows updates and, I mean, all that complexity. I, it needs to go away. And so I think that Windows 8 is a big bet and an important bet. And it's an important, uh, I think, um, admission on Microsoft's part that they need to change what they're doing. Because otherwise they're going to cease to be relevant if they don't. Yeah, that's why we're so interested, though, in seeing Windows on ARM, right? I mean, because I feel like what we've seen of Windows 8 on Intel, it's not really simpler in a way. I mean, you still it's, got the old it's, it's desktop the, experience the there. You know, ARM is the electric car. It's the future. And then Windows on Intel is the hybrid. It gives you the best, it, it's the kind of the best of both worlds. Wait, wait, so it's good wait, for power users. Wait a minute. You mean, are you saying that Windows 8 on ARM would look different than Windows 8 on Intel? It wouldn't be well, the same? No, sort Microsoft's of, not saying sorry. that, right? <laughs> it will, but we assume <laughs> and believe that it sure. will be just the Metro stuff. Kind of a stripped down tablet focused. Yeah, an iPad version of Windows, essentially. You I know, guess the that makes sense. Device. But we don't know that for sure because they they no. show when we saw a screen capture of it from Build, there was a desktop there yeah, yeah. too yeah. on ARM. So I, yeah, I do I mean, believe that. I, I don't know. Way. That would be a mis Do we agree that would be a mistake? Yes. There may be technical reasons why it has to be there. Um, they wouldn't do it for they do it for market reasons, right? For <laughs> they would do it because they feel that the business market would not be comfortable with a tablet Windows tablet what, what, that I don't didn't have a desktop. Okay, so giving you a desktop, but one that cannot run any of the applications that exist, <laughs> is, is worse than not having a desktop. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's an exercise in frustration. It would be Where's better. Where's my mind sweeper? No, but yeah, why they're the doing it, I think, would is... would be better if it wasn't there. <laughs> right. Right. But I think the reason they're doing it is they want to continue with this idea and illusion, or whatever you want to call it, that there's only one Windows 8. Right. They don't want you to think Windows 8 on ARM, Windows 8 on Intel. They just want to say Windows 8. Right. Right. I'm just telling you, I, I'm, that's my guess why. I, I, you're right. It sounds it's, like a Microsoft thing to do. I agree. It does. It, well, uh, there's, you know, there's a transition you go through. I mean, you, you have to, you can look at other transitions, whether it was from DOS to Windows, right? Uh, where, you know, Windows runs DOS apps for a long time or 16-bit apps, same thing. Or on the Mac side, you know, that classic environment that used to be in Mac OS X, but it's no longer in Mac OS X. You know, there's a, there's a transition period. You, have, you can't just... Uh, you know, kill everything and then call it Windows. You know, you have to have that continuation. And, of course, their corporate customers demand that kind of backwards compatibility. So I understand that there needs to be a hybrid approach, and it's okay. But I do think that, uh, you know, when you move just to, from X86 uh, to X64, you go to 64-bit, some of the stuff gets dropped off, and there's a nice cleansing effect to that, that you're, you're getting rid of some backwards junk, you know, this legacy crap that's in there. Um, ARM is another wonderful chance to do that. If they could just cut that stuff off and say, look, we're not supporting it, you know, it's just, we're just not going to do it. I, I honestly believe that that would be better in the long run because you still have a choice, you know, for the people who do need that other stuff, you can get an Intel tablet then. If you, if you need it for whatever reason, get the Intel one. If you want an iPad, but one that's like Windows, you know, get an ARM tablet. I, I think that's how it should be, but we just don't know how it will be. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, you can't just do the perfect thing always. Sometimes you have to be aware of market expectations, all of that stuff. You can't do the Microsoft, technically right thing. Microsoft has many masters. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. You know, they can't make the Apple is able to be very decisive about things because um, 
well, in the beginning, well, we'll see if say, that continues. Well, you know, and yeah, without, right without now, a guy, they, have the, they do mainstream market now. So, right. the, but you know, with the, the Mac in particular, because it wasn't a huge market, right? Um, they could they could move very decisively, and that was just something Microsoft could never do. So we agree then that the best thing to do would have Windows on ARM be a tablet, a pure tablet interface, and I think Metro is great. Basically, take the, I don't know why you even do it. Call it Windows Eight. Take the Windows Phone and and blow it up. Isn't that really what a iPad is? Is a giant iPhone. Mm -hmm. And all the apps are already written for touch. <laughs> They're already designed to do that. Why not I agree do that? With you. I agree with you a million percent, and Microsoft disagrees with you a million percent. Huh. Um, they, they, you know, it. We're going to talk about this later in the show today about Courier and uh, oh yeah, yeah, the lessons yeah, 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 learned. Yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe we should wait for that. We'll but um, it, yeah. this has to do with Windows 8 and the choices they're making too. Yeah, Jay Allard was right. I don't think so, actually. But. Oh, good, 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 good. Debate, debate, debate. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm starting to look like a seal. It, it must be this ball that I'm sitting on. Internet Explorer <clears throat> usage share drops below 50%. There are now, there are, every now browser is now in the plurality. There is no... I was curious, so I've been traveling, I'm sorry. I, I, I've, saw, I've seen this headline, and this is not what I got from Net Applications. Is this data from somewhere else? Uh, this is Net Applications. It is Net Applications. Yeah, because I look, I looked at that and I could have sworn it was fifty, one, fifty three, somewhere in there. Let's go to well, the so, tape. Yeah, let's. let's, go to the let's tape. So, what it is um, is Microsoft still has slightly more than fifty percent on the desktop, and you know, which uh, this was a surprising statistic to me. There's like ninety four percent of browsing is still being done on the desktop or on PCs and Macs, you know, sure. uh, and not mobile. I mean, when everybody talks about how stats are changing in the in the browser world, you always see, oh yeah, because there are all these iPads out there, and there are all these iPhones and Android phones. But <coughs> this isn't what's happening. So I mean, I mean it's, I, so it's fifty two point six percent on the desktop, saw, right? which is still right. which is still a big drop. But that's the number. Yeah. So you're saying that by including mobile browsing, we can get IE below fifty percent. <laughs> right. If we work. Well, that's up. a little cheap. I mean, uh, you know. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to get it below fifty. No, I don't mean of you. I, I, I mean, you know, that, but, that, but that, but that's the story, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I okay. think that's a legitimate story. I think you should look at it all together um, because you know people don't go, oh, let me like do one thing and well uh, maybe some people do this maybe i want to use one browser here one browser here a different browser based on what platform there, i'm using yeah i guess people do do you call the windows phone browser ie even yes oh, it, it is. is okay so i mean but I, I mean really come on safari on iphone is not safari on desktop ie on the phone is not ie on the desktop they're separate apps really let's be yeah. honest um well i don't know actually you know it's interesting it's I, a I would name say the case, only well no I don't, I don't think that's necessarily true i mean um, Safari is uh, the same core technology on the iOS as it is on the Mac and on Windows. And uh, actually, the IE engine is the same. I guess the engine's the same, yeah. Windows Phone. Is, so, yeah. And I, I would assume that uh, Google is going to move Chrome onto Android and make that the, the web browser there as well. So that will probably be the case uh, there, too. So I don't know. I mean, I, I, that may be fair to say that those things are yeah. all... Essentially what, the same. What yeah. really uh, skews it, of course, is that uh, when you cut, when you go mobile only, Safari on the iOS platform has sixty-two percent of all mobile browsing. I mean, yep. it's st totally dominant. Right. IE has point one six. <laughs> you can barely see it. It's that it's little sliver. It's like a it's like a one <laughs> pixel wide sliver. <laughs> Which it's, makes sense because of the market share of Windows, Windows phones, phone. right? So really, I think uh, yeah, I think you have to break out the. Desktop and mobile. So this is saying, if I'm reading this correctly, that Safari Mobile is 620 times the size of IE. It's like, <laughs> if, if I do my math correctly, I am not a mathematics expert. Well, what's funny is even Opera Mini is like you know a hundred times bigger. So. I can't. Who is using Opera Mini? What is that like? A it's it, horrible. I, well, I Java thing? What, what, what is no, that? what Opera has done is they've made a browser for mobile platforms. It's used on a lot. I mean, you have it on every... Oh, where, where, where are you using that Every on? Every platform. It has... There's a version for uh, Android, iPhone. I don't know about Windows Mobile, but... Um, can we just can we just BlackBerry? Vote Opera? I bet a lot of BlackBerry. I think bet almost all, right. all BlackBerry users use it. We need, to, we need to get rid of this stupid stuff that's on the edge of everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's 18%, Paul. It's not on the edge of nothing. It's going to be trending down. <laughs> it's bigger than Android's browser. Yeah. That's ludicrous. Oh, no, it is on Windows Phone 7. All right. So it's uh, uh, available for all the platforms. And then when Opera is done with Opera Mini is kind of what Amazon's going to do with their browser on the Kindle Fire is uh, 
They've they've, See, they've cashed stuff to speed it up. I, I think that if uh, IE mobile growth could just you know grow by like four hundred percent and actually beat other, then they would probably be in big shape. <laughs> it's that <laughs> so other it, that's killing you right there. It's literally four <laughs> times as big, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. And it, and you know it's funny because we don't even know what that stuff is. That's like great. It's like that Japanese browsers in there. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. sleep near. Yeah, sleep, sleep near, near mobile. Yeah. Browser, what's that one called? Browser Plus or something? Well, on both yeah. Android, on both Android and iPhone, there are a number. They're numerous. Uh, you know, half a dozen or more uh, third-party browsers, and Android especially. One of the reasons I think the Android number is so low is that Android users don't, often don't use the stock browser. They use Dolphin or Xscope, or I mean, there's dozens of other browsers. Kind of the nature of that platform. That's good. I think Google is going to be smart about that and turn that into Chrome. And yes, I bet they are start using it. More. Supposedly, that's the next step, and I think once yeah. it's Chrome, it's it'll it'll do well. So I think right, we because should. Because that that was the takeaway from this, right? Is Chrome is growing by leaps and bounds. Yeah, on I mean, the on this is desktop worldwide, and desktop. Chrome is Chrome is seventeen point six two percent, catching I, up with Firefox right now. Yep. I, I, look, I, I really th feel strongly that this picture you're looking at now is going to change in a year or two to be. Chrome, Firefox, i.e., roughly, you know, a third each. And then Safari, maybe we'll have whatever the, you know, up to 10% or whatever. But I think those three are going to be the browsers that people use. I think that's how it's going to split yeah, I think out. You're right. I think you're excellently right. You know, the, we're talking about i.e., losing, you know, going below 50. But I think the big story is coming six months or whatever is going to be Chrome surpassing uh, Fox. We, we, well, all except for Mary Joe. The boys, no, I agree. I, the boys on this show use Chrome. Mary Jo, you still use? I use Chrome. I use no, Chrome too? I'm, I'm a total Chrome user. I don't user. know why I've I thought you were an IE. user. Okay, nope. so so we're all Chrome users. And, you know, Dvorak used to do that test, uh, this was many years ago, maybe in 2001 or two, where he'd ask people what browser they used. And if they used, or, I mean, search engine they used. And if they used Google, he realized, he knew, you know, kind of knew, oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're paying attention. If they're using right. AltaVista, it was like, yeah, yeah. And I yeah, think yeah. nowadays that's the that that's how that's a geek validation question. What browser do you like? And if yep. they use Chrome, they're paying attention. Right. <laughs> I just use I, Chrome listen. because it's faster on my Windows exactly. Seven PC. It's faster. I, 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 it's uh, efficient and it's secure. I run into issues with other browsers, mm -hmm. and when you run into too many of those issues, you just stop trying. You know. And IE just doesn't have some of the stuff that's really simple and or just built into Chrome. And I'm, it is I'm interesting though that we can talk nope. about browser preference, when really uh, a browser that does the right, the job right is completely transparent. It's just a window onto exactly. a website, and really you they you shouldn't really even know what you're using. And there is yet this strong preference. I'm not sure why that because, is. Because, like I said, when you use another browser and it gets in your it way, then you notice it. You right. don't want to notice that damn thing, right. you know. And that's. Right. I, 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 by all rights, I should be using IE, and I can't. I just can't do it. It drives me crazy. Uh, what What is it that it doesn't do right? Does it not render pages right? Or yeah, so no, no, it's fine for that kind of stuff. It's, it's weird because, I have very specific things I need to do for work, right? And they involve interacting with these web forums and so forth. So, IE doesn't have such things as built-in spell checking. It doesn't have a very simple way to paste as text. Yeah, you know that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, Chrome just does this stuff, and right. and it, it, that what I just said kind of works like as you expect it to work. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Right, right. And when when I can't make IE work the way I want it to work, I I just lose interest. And right. people will send me these little t oh here you can use this, you can use this, you know yeah yeah I get it. I, I the problem is I blow away, away my uh, PC installs regularly and I reinstall things. I bring Chrome up and it just works. I don't want to have to reconfigure and reinstall add-ins and do all that junk. I, I want it just to work, and, and Chrome is the one that just works. I do have to point out, though, that there's absolutely no reason for browser loyalty and that this could change at any minute. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, Firefox was this for many years. Yeah, and it's not now. No. Because of all the no, and, and, issues. And, 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 and it's important to note, I mean, Microsoft has done a great job improving IE. IE9 is a lot better than IE8, which was better than IE7, but, you know, it's just, uh, they've improved the process, they've improved the product and all that, but, you know, Chrome is on this treadmill where they're just releasing updates, you know, regularly, and it's always getting better. Yeah, I don't even know now what, what version of <laughs> I think it's. I think it's on 15. I think, it's I think it went to 15, 15, yeah. But, yeah. you know, every time I check, it's something else, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, they don't even worry, you don't have to worry about it. They don't, that, and that was smart, too. Uh, that was smart too. I think Microsoft a little behind on this one as well, where uh, they're still announcing it's IE nine, 
mm-hmm. instead of saying it's IE right. and let the versions yeah, fall Firefox where they may. Kinda, yeah, Firefox figured that out, or Mozilla did. There's, uh, they still pay a little more attention than they should. They were the last to shift, but, but neither Safari nor Chrome ever say what version number. It's well, you know, although Chrome. if you're a business user, you prefer to know you the want version to know number. That. Yeah. Right, because you've got to test your apps with right. things and make sure they work before you deploy them to well, your whole company. Do so, you not see Chrome impl- uh, deployed in the enterprise? You do, but I mean, that Microsoft really pays more. I would say they pay more attention to the enterprise customers sure than these other companies do. Yeah, right. Yeah, a lot more. Is yeah. that, is that going to be good for them or bad for them in the long run? It's good for them right now. <laughs> That's well, what they're making them. Money. It makes it, it right. makes them a, it makes them an enterprise company. It makes them like a Salesforce or Oracle. <laughs> they are an enterprise company, and I think that that may be one boring. of the things. Well, it, it's for sure boring for everybody but Mary Jo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I seriously, I think that that's over the last couple of years that we've been doing this show. That's really what's happening to Microsoft. Is and I think Microsoft does not like it. Is going kicking and screaming. They say, "But we have Connect. We have Xbox. You know, know, we have Windows." They're 8. so desperate to be a consumer brand. We, we have Skype. We have Skype. People love Skype. Uh, but really, maybe they should just accept it. That, because what happens is things like enterprise require them to continue to number the browsers. So they have to continue to do little subtle things that, that underscore they're an enterprise company, not a consumer company. And uh, I, the Windows I, I, 8 desktop, perfect example. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it comes yeah. back to, you know, the old question that keeps going round and round. Should Microsoft be two companies, three companies, right. four companies, you know, or should they still just be one? They want to stay one company, but I don't think it makes as much sense as maybe it used to for them to do that. I don't I don't know if we have this in the show notes today, uh, but there is a uh, some older Microsoft uh, Vision videos, you know, that were highlighted this week. And it's interesting going back to the old videos because you can tell that Microsoft very much saw themselves as a consumer brand. Yep. And that... They I think, still do. That one we showed I, last week was all about the living room. Right, but I think the difference is today people look at Microsoft tr- doing that stuff and they don't get it. But I, I would say back in the late 1990s, Microsoft was sort of a consumer brand, right? They were fresh off of Windows 95. They were kind of a big consumer brand. There was this thought that, you know, they could do this online through the MSN services, that they would be successful with consumers. So you see like the teenage girl runs home and gets on her bed and she's got a laptop and she's, you know, messaging people on MSN Messenger and she's interacting with the MSN Explorer interface and this is how people were going to be. And of course, flash forward 10, 12 years and people are using iPads and iPods, not, you know, Windows PCs. It's kind of hard to, it takes a certain amount of luck, I would guess, to predict the future. <laughs> Uh, nobody would have made the bets that would have uh, gotten them rich, you know, <laughs> right. uh, back then. Right. right. We'd all be, we, that's right. None of us would be here if we knew that because we would have, you know, we would have bought the right stocks and would have retired. Yep. The fact that we are still working shows we have no freaking clue. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so please listen to us every week. <laughs> hey, we don't, you know what I've learned, I got out of, I mean, it's funny oh, no, because right. you get demanded and of course we probably will do it on our end of year episode. They demand that you predict the future. But I, you know, I've gotten to the point now where I say, I, if I knew, I had no oh, idea. No, I, I'm wrong about everything. I'm always wrong. Future, of course. That's why we're pundits, not, uh, you know, executives because we'd have been hired by now uh, if we knew what was going on. I don't think it's possible in the midst of history occurring to accurately understand no, we're what the, f- the impact is going to be. We're the frog happened. in the pot. Yeah. Although John Barry Barlow was on uh, Triangulation a few weeks ago, and he said, you know, I actually tested that. <laughs> I put a frog in a pot of cold water and started heating it up, and yep. he said the frog jumps out. Oh. So there. I thought there that was go. great. The guy actually said, you know, I wonder if that's true. And he tested it. I would be afraid to cook a frog. I think no frogs were harmed, in the, but the, he's lucky. <laughs> he's damn lucky. <laughs> it could have, could have gone terribly wrong. <laughs> we're going to take a break and come back. Mary Jo Foley, Paul Therott. <coughs> are, you, are you getting sick there, Paul? I'm just, it's dry here. Uh, yeah, that's my, see, that's yep. the thing I, I don't go to, I agree with Mary Jo on that, in that one respect. I get sick every time I, I go to Vegas because it's dry. I, I, need to, it's I, should, I should just go to CVS and buy a $20 humidifier and put it next I to the I always dead. bring a humidifier. You should ask the hotel because they, they know, often I have these, you know. I, go, I, I always have two cups of water next to the bed because I wake yep. up in the middle of the night with yep. my tongue is shriveled up. And yep. Those $6 bottles of water can add up, I can tell you that right now. Actually, the Mandalay Bay, they're probably twelve ninety five. Oh. 
<laughs> no, it's like tap water. It's, <laughs> yeah, no. it's awful. That's awful. Hotels often have their own humidifiers. Usually there's three or four. If you get there early, you can get one. But I, you know what? Somebody ought to, we always have all these little portable electronic, you know, power strips and stuff. Somebody ought to have a portable humidifier. It would sell very well among the geeks. You know, crowd. I have like a, a, a it's got to be like a thousand gallon tub in there. I should just fill just the fill thing it with water. water. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it there. You know. water. Put a frog in there. Just see what happens. <laughs> We're going to take, <laughs> take a break. Come back and talk more about Microsoft. We got some big items on the agenda. Microsoft Courier being one of them. I cannot wait to hear this debate. And uh, there may be a new Xbox. This is a rumor I'd like to know more about. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, Leo Laporte, add, go to Assist Express. If you're in the uh, business of supporting clients, colleagues, customers, you know how important a good remote support tool is because the last thing you want to do is phone support. Believe me, I do it on the radio show uh, every day and uh, it's just, or every weekend, and it's just painful. It's so hard to talk people through a fix over the phone. With Go to Assist Express, it's great. You just, you know, you, you give them a link. They click the link. You don't need to really support this very well, uh, very much. You don't want to support the support tool, right? You got other things to do, like fix the problem. So it's simple. They don't have to. Uh, there's no IT help needed, no port forwarding, nothing like that. They just run the, click the link, go to Assist Express, installs the software, and you're in. You can chat with them while you're fixing their computer. You could do things that, of course, every single support person wants to do. Things like eight sessions at once. Unattended sessions, you get an assay. Press a button. It says, "Here's the operating system down to the point oh 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 number. Here's the uh, background software. Here's the security software. All of that stuff." And with unlimited use, Go to Assist Express lets you support as many people as you want for one low flat rate. But this is the lowest rate of all for the next thirty days, free. If you go to the website, go to assist.com/windows. You know, I like you to do that because, of course, I don't ever want you to buy something you don't try first. That's what we—that's kind of our philosophy here at Twit. All of our advertisers offer free trials, but also you'll see how fast and easy it is to install. You'll see how simple it'll be for your clients. Take control of the problems and solve them the way you know best with Go to Assist Express. Go to assist.com. Slash Windows, free customer service for you, 24-7, 128-bit end-to-end encryption using SSL, all the things that you know you need. Go to assist.com slash Windows. We thank them for their support. Windows Weekly with Paul Therott, Betty Jo Foley. Um, let me see. Let me look at the rundown. Microsoft spells out Android patent issues. You know, there's a demand right now from the, the demand that's coming from, I think... Uh, is it Samsung? Somebody is. Show us the source code. That's what everybody wants to see. And we still haven't, we still don't see this. Apple, same thing. They're saying, show us the source code. Um, Microsoft says Android's standing on the shoulders of others. They kind of join in with Apple. That's what Apple says. You copied us. Paul, is Google stealing patented technologies Yes. <laughs> Simply yes, put. <laughs> they are. But but how do we know until we see the source? Well, I think the first <laughs> indication is that uh, many, many Android partners have simply cross-licensed this technology. Well, so you could also, I mean, the counter-argument is, well, it's cheaper to license than it is okay. to fight a big company like Microsoft. And notice Microsoft's not su suing Google directly. No, but neither is Apple, by the way. So. No, both companies are maybe a little afraid of the deep pockets and the cross patents that Google has. Yeah, right? I do that. Fi I find that interesting. It, it may be a vagary of the law where, you know, Google isn't directly selling it or uh, whatever. But maybe, okay. I don't know. Um, I think we'll get there. Um, I do think it's very important that these patents be tested in court and, uh, and hopefully via Barnes & Noble or one of the other companies, Motorola, um, that will happen. So we'll, we'll see. Will, um, uh, do you think Microsoft or Apple will go after Amazon since they're using Android on the Fire? Yeah, definitely. Mm. That's a deep pocket company. And yep. Jeff Bezos is the ki Microsoft kind of guy who'd fight, right? You don't think they will just because they're close? Um, because they've already got them to sign um, a Linux license. So oh, Amazon signed a Linux patent okay. thing with All Microsoft. Right. So I'm, I'm betting they're going to do one for Android, too. See, from the... Well, well, right. Okay. I mean, I'm sorry. I think we're talking about the same thing. I mean, Microsoft going after them means they'll getting, get across. Getting a fee. Agreement. Right. Yeah. Not necessarily yeah. suit. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, yeah. They go, sorry, they, I thought you meant in court. That's, <laughs> no, I did. I, I did, but you're right. That's the process is first you say, okay, yeah. pay up, 
and that either they pay yeah, up. I mean, or first you have the carrot, and then you bring right. the lawyers, I guess. Um, <laughs> from the, I'm just going to say, you see, the problem is that from the outside world, and I'll put myself in that uh, box, uh, we users just feel like, well, look, yeah, I mean, you know, the Microsoft took the recycled bin from Apple's trash can. That's not stealing. That's Leo, Leo, those are completely different things. I don't know why we have to realize that. No. When you put something in the trash and throwing it away, it's you put trash. It in the you know, they stole it from me. I had it first. Remember, OS2 had a shredder. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just saying that's how it is. Uh, a good idea propagates. You know, Apple's suing over slide to unlock. Well, but from a consumer point of view, we want everybody to use the best ideas. Uh, that's the way that was makes products better. We don't. Nobody wants it that. Oh, any uh, any smartphone that has a big glass screen is slide, slide to unlock was number three on my list of reasons why you want an iPhone. So I could see where that would be a big deal. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess you know if that's so your goal in life is to protect your intellectual property, which of course it is as a fiduciary responsibility of any publicly traded company. You know, th there's a feature in iOS 5 that was in Windows Mobile 6.5, which I thought was wonderful, which was instead of just, you know, you get a phone call or a message or an email or a calendar alert or whatever it is, yeah. um, on most smartphones, you just kind of open it up and you have to go to that thing. And then Windows Mobile 6.5, a very short-lived and uh, little-loved product, had the ability to go directly to those events from the start, from that uh, lock Yeah, screen. you slide down the notification now, screen and you can, yeah. and, and then I you would just slide this. The same thing. Yeah, I love that. And that's, uh, Microsoft should sue them. <laughs> no, nobody should sue anybody. Everybody just, just should <laughs> say, use it in, in good health. Because we all love consumer. No? Am I wrong? We all love consumers. We all want to do the best. We want, all, everybody, we want everybody to have a better experience. And so, you know, slide to unlock. Go ahead, take it. I guess it doesn't I think work they should sue them. <laughs> Are you an attorney? they don't have enough lawsuits. I, I, so, I've always liked the idea of big companies going at it, you know, like uh, Godzilla and King Kong or something. You know? I, I don't because all the money that they pump into lawyers' fees in these lawsuits is money yeah. that they would otherwise put into R&D and more innovation. But I understand. I guess we're stuck with this crapola system. But yeah, okay. I'm a hippie. I mean, yeah, the way, you know, what, what I thought was interesting was there was a new um, interview with one of Microsoft's lead attorneys, Horatio Gutierrez, that came out in the San Francisco Chronicle, I think a week or so ago. And he really, really made it clear that Microsoft believes that the way the patent system works in terms of um, you pay each other almost like mutually assured destruction, right? right? I'll pay you, you pay me, everybody pays everybody, and this it's good, it works, and we're going to just keep doing that, and this is how it should work. Um, it doesn't matter, is it ethical, right, wrong? This is the way it is, and this is the way it it's is the been, way it is, yeah. we want it to be. We want this to be the it way it is. It is how it works. It is how it works. Uh, it's also notable in that interview, they asked him point blank, well, what, what exactly do you have that, you know, that yeah, they did. <laughs> Android is violating? He, he only said one thing, mm -hmm. and... Um, I actually can't remember what it was. Yeah, but it, it, was, it, you know, it, it was something basic. very small. Yeah, it was a very right. basic thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, a method by and, which you can swipe the screen to occur, you know, cause something to exactly. occur. Yeah, because you know, everybody's like, thinking they're these big, all-encompassing patents, right? But they're not. What they're talking yeah. about is, like, we'll sell you a bundle of, like, 500 of our little tiny patents, and you pay one fee, like $5 per phone per, Actually, know, I think it was sync-related. I think it was some, something to do with sync. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's that's how they're looking at it. Like, hey, you bu you get this whole bundle of all these patents that have to do with mobile, and mm. you pay us five dollars per phone. That's it. You're all covered. Mm. Yeah, they're they're looking for a little something something well, under something. the table. Just give me a little something something. That's little something. little vig. You know? <laughs> a little, little bit. <laughs> so here, ladies and gentlemen, is Microsoft's vision of what the year 2010 will look like. Are you ready it's for like this? It's like watching Back to the Future. <laughs> this is 2010 <laughs> in your headlights, ladies and gentlemen. The evolution of real-time collaboration technology promises endless innovation and opportunity. Microsoft appreciates this opportunity to share its vision for the future of our real-time collaboration initiative. Ta -ta -ta so So uh, you're, uh, you're at the airport in your Hawaiian... Like more Hawaiian shirts in this than in your Hawaiian, Hawaiian shirts. The does this predate Twitter? When is this? When did this? Uh... I believe this is. Is this? Oh no, this is later. This might be 2004. The near future. 
Now, they show these at sales uh, events and CES and things like that, right? Video, Hawaii vacation. Hawaii. So he's looking at a, a video on his incredible uh, Motorola. By the way, on his Windows Mobile flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. And it looks like there's a chunk taken out of the upper left. I don't... Yep. <laughs> it's probably where his stylus goes, Leo. <laughs> Don't laugh. That's probably what it is. Yeah, well, apparently Greg nice. Kinnear works for the FDA now. So. <laughs> yeah. Presenting the or Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin. Yeah. Scientists attending the seminar. Oh, I hate it when they hire actors to do this the because they're so again. smarmy. Oh, he's getting a travel alert. He's, he's, we had a team meeting well, good Lord, that phone is bigger than a shoebox. Oh, here Look, comes the stylus. The stylus. <laughs> By the way, that was another thing Gates mocked. I mean, uh, Jobs mocked yeah. Gates endlessly for. He said, no tablet. With a stylus will ever succeed, he says. We have ten of them. They're called fingers. Look at the size of that one, too. Urgent presentation. Tap. Hello, PC. Stylus. Please tell me you'll be back in time for the. Thank God, 2010 is nothing like this. I'm really, I'm really relieved. The best part of that little segment you just showed is that the tablet PC she was holding had the battery removed. <laughs> there's a hole. See the big, yeah, see there's a big hole in the back. Hole where the battery goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. <laughs> it's thin and light, Leo. Yeah, because it has no power. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Well, it's funny because this is what they thought 2010 would be like only, you know, six years ago. And it's completely different than this. It is nothing yep. like this. And it's, right. This feels old. This doesn't feel modern yeah. at all. Well, it it has that sort of his you battery's know, early missing 2000s. too. <laughs> Look, it's got like Longhorn style dialogues. Right, but you know, uh, okay. So that underscores what we said earlier. You can't predict the. It's hard to predict the future, even for a company that's immersed in it, mm -hmm. um, because there's disruptive things happen that sure. you couldn't predict. You know, and uh, and so uh, you know this this isn't that far off, really, in this in the in conceptually, in the idea that they're you're going to use a tablet more. And somehow yep. it's going to connect back. There's this is really about the cloud in some respects. You know, he's he's on his tablet. This is go. This is go to meeting. He's, he's on his tablet. You're seeing him in video. All well, I, to be fair, uh, Microsoft's real time communication stuff has certainly continued and even flourished. Right. I mean, right. they they do a lot of this stuff. And right. Skype, the Skype purchase kind of falls into this category right. as well. Right. Yep. Oh, this is awful. That's, that's this so awful. much work. The, the little tapping and the tapping, the yeah. tap, 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 and the it's, it, it get, it hit that little X. Hit it, hit oh, it. Oh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> yeah. It just gives me a headache looking at it. Oh, there, did you get it? Oh, you got. Wait, whoa, yeah, drag it over. Mm -hmm. There you go. But some of the ideas are there, right? Like presence is there, yeah, right? You can yeah. see who, where people are and all. Yeah. So there's some things that were there. Yeah, although doing a multi-person conference, yeah. you know. Right. The only thing really wrong, really, is the stylus and the and the form factor of the. It, they just didn't get tablets, but but they were right in the sense of how tablets would be used. I think this just this little UI things like this. Um, I don't think anybody wants to do that. I want a little picture of my face next to the cursor when I edit a document. Because I'm not, I'm not clear who's editing it. Right. Oh, it's me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> look, it's me. Everybody likes to see a picture of themselves. Yeah, that never yes. gets old. Never gets old. Mm. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. I just some, Somebody in the chat room gave me that link. Thank you, chat room. And I'm glad to see this came out. Let me see the date, if I could find the date on it. I believe it's 2004. Mm. Uh, it was uploaded 2007, but I bet, you're, I bet you're right. That was just when it was uploaded. It's not on a Microsoft site. It's just something. No, it's, it's got that Longhorn yeah, vibe to it. So yeah, it, it yeah. had to have been before Vista. and right. Yeah, no Vista. You're right. Yeah. For the switch over, because they, they ended up not making Vista look like that. So it yeah. was from that conceptual period, you know, the Longhorn stuff. So Connect, you know, I just, I have bought more Xboxes than any other gaming system. Uh, <laughs> that could be a good or bad. Well, some was because of Red Ring's death. There was one that did, after the fourth Red Ring, I just said, I'm not, I'm not going to fix it anymore. I don't, I don't, I know it's free to fix it, but I'm just, I'm not going to fix it. So I bought another one. And I, we just bought an Elite for our new gaming show. Mm -hmm. And of course, now when I buy an Xbox, and I imagine this is true of everybody, you buy the Connect bundle, right? You'd be crazy to buy an Xbox without Connect. Yes. Or, would you? or <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, I Mary Jo may feel differently about this stuff. That Microsoft just uh, celebrated the one year anniversary of Connect, and they put out this concept video. And I, I take exception to this uh, in some ways because the current Connect is so inaccurate that, that I'm sure it will get better over time. 
But the truth of the matter is the Kinect requires a room where you can be at least six feet away from the sensor, preferably 10 feet away for it to work right. properly. Uh, it doesn't see black people. I, I don't know how else to is say that. Is that true? Just, yes. Um, you, it only you're works if you're white? Yes, <laughs> unless you're in an extremely well-lit room. Um, and well, I, that's I, kind I, of a flaw. Yeah, I have personal experience with that one, so I can I can tell you that that's how accurate. embarrassing is that? Invite a friend over, and Microsoft Connect doesn't see him. Sorry, talk I about can't. talk about I, I, race I, I, blind. I, 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 I please. So uh, when I when I see these, uh, and people will say, well, but you know, Connect is the future, and motion you know control is the future, and all this stuff. And I think, well, maybe, but the problem is, you know, for a PC interaction, right now I happen to be. Well, actually, I'm, I'm right now I'm about as far from my monitor as I am at home, so maybe. You know, whatever that is, two, three, right. two and a half feet, something like that. You know, try positioning yourself six feet away from a it's computer and see how well yeah. that's going to work. It's can they make so, Connect work though? If you're closer, I mean, can't they? I, I think it. I like I said, I think they can improve it. I'm just saying, you know, we have to. It, it's so bad now. I just, I, I, I'm just confused by why we can't. We should assume that this is going to be a lot better anytime soon. I, I think the voice control stuff is important, and that's one of the things. You know, when I, I look back to read. What I wrote in my review a year ago, I sort of highlighted that, that, you know, you spend a lot of time, you're in front of the computer doing this, and you're trying to get it, to, and you move your hand, and it kind of loses the curse, and you go back, and, you, and after a while, you say, screw this, this is stupid. It, it's easier to use the controller, and it's easier still just to, Talk it. to speak to speak Now, to it. Uh, and that, I've only done a little voice uh, with Connect. Do you have to shout? Because it is across the room. No, no. You it can seems speak in a normal right. voice? Okay. Typically, well, here's the thing. So if you're playing a video game, you're not going to be interacting with voice because that will be loud. Right. But the typical scenario is you're just using the UI, and so you'll just say right. connect, play the movie, or whatever it is, and, and that stuff works fine. This seems to be the agreed uh, future of television uh, yeah. that you talk to it. I do think we're heading to that future. You're going to walk into a room and talk. Yep. The things and you'll it's just like the way siri works the way the connect works today um where you, things will be listening for your voice and then based on the first thing you say they'll perk up or not and uh, i think that will be a very common way to interact with uh you know computing devices in the future where's I mean, a lot of people a lot of people that want to know are they going to build something like the connect sensor into pcs directly right so uh, people ask all yeah. the time is windows 8 going to automatically recognize gestures and voice using something like a connect that's built into PCs. And I'm thinking no way. Unless, really? I know. I'm and, thinking but, no. But. They really? Have to, they would have to improve that sensor dramatically mm. and then be able to fit it into a laptop screen. Mm. And I just don't, yeah. I don't, I'm not, I, just, I see no evidence of this. So I don't, yeah. I don't know, but I don't, I don't see any way that could happen within the Windows 8 time frame. This was right. a what technology. They're, what they're going to have next year. Sorry, Leo. I was going to say what they're going to have next year is the, um, software development kit for Windows, right? So they said sometime early next year, probably around CES, you'd think, um, they're going to announce there's a software development kit to tie Windows PCs to Connect, and you can use it under a commercial license, not just a hobbyist license like you can now. Um, and they're expecting this is what's going to have the whole explosion of new kinds of apps and business apps for Connects tied to PCs. I think you're kind of, I have a feeling that uh, in, if you go inside Microsoft, there is the, f is the feeling that, yeah, we would like to do this, and no, we don't have the hardware to do it right now. Sure. That, and do yeah. you think that there's a Skunk Works project to kind of, they bought Connect. It came from a third party. It was an Israeli company. And I don't think they've put much into it since it, they got it. Well, you know, who could say? I mean, I, so somebody must be somewhere working on this, making it better. Yes? Yeah, so there, there have yeah. to be well, two things are. occurring. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, it's, it's um, the uh, Xbox group with Microsoft Research, right? That's who's working on it together. Yeah, this yeah. is that, that's the, this kind, it's the kind of thing, the yeah. MIT Media Lab kind of well, stuff. You, you want to be able to improve the thing you have, right? Because that's what's around. Yeah, we're, it's going to be with us for a few years. And, and then you want to be working on the next-gen version, which should be smaller and lighter and thinner and all that kind of junk. And hopefully it can be put into computers as well. But, the, you know, the current version... Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I've uh, I've tried. I can't even use it in my office because my office is too small, and my living room is not particularly big. I mean, it, we're it directly dead center of the TV. You can't use it. We you have to use it at an angle. You know, just be, to have enough space. There's just not enough room in my house. 
It's for people with Microsoft mansions. Come on. Exactly. No, but I mean, I don't, that's I don't, that's, that's yeah. clearly not going to be it. I mean, that's a consumer no. product. They're, they have I'm to have kidding. something that sits right. in the monitor, just like a, you know, a camera now is in many monitors and somehow. So what right. makes the Kinect work? It's not merely a camera. It also has a, a depth per perception. A depth and motion sensor and, and yeah. It, it's funny. The, the very thing that makes Kinect special the ability for it just to sort of see you and, and work without you having to hold anything or whatever is also its biggest problem because there are a lot of uh, instances where directly interacting with an object makes sense. You know, you can play a piano on an iPad screen using multi-touch and it works, but you cannot play a piano like this in the air and that will never work. I don't care how good you are at it. It will never work. Right. That's just not going to happen. So... You know, they show in that one of the videos, they show someone doing uh, like an air cello. That is the lud most ludicrous, absolutely impossible, silliest thing I've ever seen. And for them to be showing that as if this was this is what's coming next year, you know. Oh, and uh, so here, I like this one. Let's have Connect in the operating Yeah, the theater. patient is dying. Hold on, I'm trying to get Connect to respond. <laughs> Hold on. I'm over here, Connect. Uh... I, I, it's, I'm sorry. It's And I don't mean to be cynical about this. It's just people... I've been really dumbstruck by how accepting people are of this stuff. Like this is, yeah, this is going to happen. Right. You know, they're they're so everyone is so negative about Microsoft in general, but for some reason, this is the one that's going to work. You know. Well, we want and, the and future. I'm, we want the future to be. Here. We all want the future, but if you've used Connect, you know that this stuff is not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. I'm sorry. I you know I wish it was better, but it's not. Where am, I want to find these videos. Where where do they? Is it on the press pass site? I'm I'm looking for it. Yeah, you're right in the right place. It's uh, it it's, it's somewhere it's in, in one here. of those. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I want to I want to see what Microsoft. I mean, they're really they're pushing this. Connect effect reaches far beyond gaming. They say it's the connect effect. The That's connect awesome. effect. <laughs> and it's, it's like the type of thing that turns you into a zombie. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's the connect effect. I I mean I think that the this that's the problem is that you get. PR people writing this stuff, and then the technologists who have to implement it go, hmm, yeah, well, there's some issues. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is use it. it look, it's, it's fun for the simple little games that they have. It's fine, I should say. Um, but that's so my question. Is it cannot, isn't, isn't it possible for them to implement, to improve, to make this? Well, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, but again, it's going to change thing, a lot, you know, right? Musical instrument. This is not happening. <laughs> Yeah. It's not happening. I don't care how good it gets. Yeah. Because you don't, you have to be hitting something for this to make sense. Right. You you can't play an air version of this <laughs> instrument. It, it, that's not possible. You can't play this. You can't do. So here's some B-roll. I don't know if this is it. This is this is what Microsoft gives television stations so that when they do a story, what's next? Soon people will be operating on you using their Microsoft Xbox 360 and Connect. So I don't no, know this is. Old. This is all just no, old B-roll. This isn't it either. Dang, nabbit. Uh, Kid-friendly <laughs> games, TV ad. Let's see the TV ad. That That's going to be for sure what's uh, next. I, I, no, this guy, God help. <laughs> there. Here's the there cello. There it is. It's a TV ad. Well, no, you, Paul, you didn't say it was a television ad. How could they have put this on TV? This is even worse than I thought. <laughs> okay. Look, here's stuff you can't do with the Connect. We started okay. with a sensor. Yes. That turned voice and yes. Movement. And it Imagine. worked. Xbox. Play. Mm. We thought this will be fun to play with. Yeah. And it was. Yeah. Daddy, my arm hurts. <laughs> Something amazing is happening. That's not going to happen. Starting to imagine <laughs> things we hadn't even thought of. Really? I'm sorry. I really. I have nothing but disdain for this. <laughs> really? I solved cancer with oh. Connect. <laughs> Why not just use it? Did you see how close he was to yeah. the sensor? Yeah, that doesn't work. Doesn't work. Nor her. Doesn't work. Beautiful things. So this is what happens when you let an ad agency. It also has to be above you, Inspired by the way, for things. it to work. Right. Can't work below you. So this is not the existing Connect. No, this, this is, is next, fake. the next connect. Which is why, even though the world keeps asking us what we'll do. Oh, no, we're going to dis disarm a bomb. <laughs> Using connect. <laughs> connect, I really need you to see me now. <laughs> no pressure. But don't play the cello if you're an African-American. Hmm. Somebody, somebody, hmm. I, there's got to be a law against advertising that. That's. That only, is, in, only in uh, the U.K. 
None of that works. Here in the United States, there is no law against lying in ads. That's crazy. I thought there was. And then I started doing ads. God. <laughs> <laughs> This is why I become cynical. <laughs> what happens? I want to believe in technology. I, I want to think that the future is always going to be better. And then they put out an ad like that, and I want to strangle somebody. Nivek V says, Paul, they're talking about possibilities. It's possibilities. Yeah, let me give you another possibility. <laughs> None of that is going to happen. None of it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that gets around the false advertising because they're not saying this is what you can do with Connect. Uh, we, more, put window, we put the Connect SDK in the hands of Windows developers, right. and now we have a bomb-sniffing robot based on Connect. <laughs> yeah, sure we do. Sure we do. <laughs> Unbelievable. You're a gamer, that's why. You, you tried to play Call of Duty with it, and you couldn't. <laughs> that's your problem. I, uh, when the, the Nintendo Wii first came out, one of the fir first games they had was the, whatever the Call of Duty was, that was new at the time. Right, I think it was right. Call of Duty 3. And they, they did have a unique way of using that nunchuck controller where you could actually make the grenade throwing motion and that would throw a grenade. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. You know, I like Call of Duty. I'll play this game. And I have to tell you, after three unsuccessful efforts at lobbing a grenade, I thought, this is the dumbest thing <laughs> This is so dumb. Well, technology should work. You shouldn't have to be, you shouldn't have to, this is one of the successes of the iPad is there's no manual. It's intuitive and it just does what you think it's going to do. You shouldn't yeah. have to, you know, okay, now wait a minute. No, your arc is not quite right. If you could just yeah. move slightly to the left. I think my point is if you're going to throw a grenade, just throw a real grenade. <laughs> <laughs> At the I advertising just, I, agency. I, it just doesn't. It doesn't work. Hey, speaking of concept videos, the, uh, the one of the, my favorite Microsoft concept videos of the last few years is that Courier video, which we loved. There was a lot of question uh, at the time about is how, is this, how conceptual is this? Is this something they intend to do, they want to do? All right, so if there was a conceptual scale where reality was on one side and utter fantasy was on the other, the Courier was on the utter fantasy side. Oh, really? I disagree. Yeah. No, you're I wrong. I, I think I, they were I, closer I, to making it than, than we thought. Wasn't there a battle? There were 300 people or something on the team, weren't there? Or 100 this is and Microsoft. Like there are 97,000 people working there. 300 people doesn't mean it. They have more people working in their cafeterias. I, but there, was, not, there was a, a courier prototype, at least. I mean, it was, like a lot of people at the time, including me, said, okay, it's just a video. But right. it's not true. It, it actually did exist. But and I don't, I don't, it was on but, its way to becoming a product. The story uh, goes, the story goes that Steve Ballmer sat there and looked at the courier and looked at Windows 8. You've got Sanofsky and you got Allard. And didn't even call all, Bill all Gates. common sense. Didn't we even want to call Bill Gates and said, Bill, what do you think? And Bill said, forget it, do Windows right. 8. Because we could, yes, we could build another device that nobody buys. Or <laughs> we could go with the thing we know works. You know, I, the, the courier was such an awful idea. It's an awful idea. Well, I'm, not, I'm not defending the idea of the courier. I mean, and, and if you guys haven't read it out there in the chat room, Jay Green did a really great story, two-part story this week on news.com, um, where he talked to 18 people at Microsoft, some who worked on the courier, some who didn't um, all. And it, it's a very interesting read because it yeah. kind of dispels some of the notions about the courier, you know, the, like, people saying it was nothing but a video and all that. Um, it really existed. And they supposedly, as Jay Green reports it, they almost were ready to start rolling this out in production. I mean, they were super that close. That close. Oh. Yeah, and the bomber shows up at oh, no. Pioneer Studios and says, guess what? We're not doing this. Well, they had to, pick, so they had to pick one. The, yes? the problem with the courier, though, is that it was just another thing, you know? It didn't yeah, fit it anywhere into the whole ecosystem. You know, we all uh, we all remember when Rim came out with this playbook thing and how they were ridiculed, still are, for not having email or contacts. Uh, I'm sorry, email or um, calendar built into the device, right? We we can we can all admit that was really stupid. That was what Courier was. It was the same thing. You know, didn't have any way to. I have to say, to there's a little failure of uh, PR here, though, because we've seen all this about Johnny Ive and the Apple Design Studios. Here's the, this is the this is the uh, Pioneer Studios where stuff like Courier was being worked on. I mean, this is yeah, but you know what? This place, I'm sorry, these people, Jay Allen and all those people, I think it was just a giant money pit, and mm -hmm. uh, the, these these were guys that were like just hemorrhaging money, not selling anything. And right, I, but, I but just, you know what I'll uh, say. I'll 
Paul, but I'll say in defense here, Jay Allard is the one who who basically is cre is credited as the father of the Xbox, right? right. I mean, he, the way right. the Xbox was created was they but. set it up in a skunk works away from the rest of Microsoft and they built it separately and yeah. didn't even tell a lot of the people at Microsoft they were doing it. And okay, so that was kind of his MO. What has he done since then? Well, the career. I mean, yeah, he did the Zoom. <laughs> he did the Zoom right. after that. Okay. And by the way, I would also, you know, not to be a jerk about it, but, you know, the Xbox 360 is also the single buggiest, buggiest consumer electronics product ever made. It was, it, it required $1.1 $1 .1 billion in, in uh, not product recalls, but in free warranty repairs. You know, it was an endemically buggy product um, that they didn't get right until the new version that came out last year or, by my math, five years after the original version. Yeah. So, I, I you know, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know that this is like a legacy of success. I, I think going yeah. with Windows was, in this case, the right choice. Yeah. So what, what my my kind of thinking back on this after, after I read Jay's story this week was, you know what this is kind of like now? This is like, should we use Windows Phone OS or Windows 8 in tablets? Yeah. And yeah. in the you know, if you if you are at Microsoft, guess which team wins every single battle? Windows, Windows wins it. Windows. Right. And that's no, the last thing. comes right. off I, a I, huge I, uh, success with the uh, yeah. Microsoft Office. He's making a money. <laughs> This video you're showing, by the way, none of this is real. <laughs> no, I understand. And this was the, this was the, this was, you know, I mean, this is part of the concept stuff we saw. The idea of the tablet was there were two sides. There was a touch side and there was a stylus side. Um, and um, you could drag things from one side to the other side. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I think it's a kludge and I don't think it would have been a hit. But um, nope. so I think they made the right choice. The problem is, you know, people are into technology. They look at this, oh, why did they make this? This is so uh, awesome. You know, look, any of them would have lined up to buy one of these things, you know. This is a nightmare. It's, this is worse than the HP uh, touchpad. I mean, this is yeah. a technical Stupid. nightmare. My, Microsoft, you know, Microsoft does have some strengths. And I, I, I feel like I've been criticizing them a lot today. But, you yeah. know, they, this is a company that makes platforms, and they're really good at it. Um, having this thing somehow be part of a platform makes some sense. But having it exist out on its own as yet another thing is not, right. that's not the type of thing Microsoft should be doing. They're not good at that. Right. 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 And that came out in the story too. It, that, you know, basically the choice was, do you want this courier thing that runs sort of a kludgy version of Windows that's not really Windows? <laughs> or do you want Windows? Okay, yep. choose. And it was really a one-off, it did feel like a one-off thing that had no, uh, no future really. You know, yeah. it, had, it didn't tie into anything. It was kintastic, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Although, you know, so there's a, there's a company, though, called Tapose, T-A-P-O-S-E, that is making something that looks a lot like the courier um, for the iPad. Huh. Um, that This also was mentioned in Jay's story this week. And uh, they... What's really interesting to me about the company behind this is Jay Allard's been advising them. And he he's also financially backing this thing. Interesting. Um, so he's yeah. like the Jeff Raskin of this. He says, "No, it's going to happen, and I'm going to make sure it right. does." Mm, yeah, I, maybe I Jeff Raskin. I, Jeff Raskin <laughs> made the copycat. You may all not remember. Yeah, no, he did uh, he, very similarly. <laughs> he he was yeah. the guy who had the original Macintosh idea. He did not want a mouse. It was all, and he so uh, he he uh, didn't want a GUI. Yeah, so he was forced out at Apple uh, by Steve Jobs, who then made the Mac. But he, Jeff Raskin, who I think was a brilliant UI guy, uh, created a, a device for Canon that was just a miserable flop based on these ideas. Yep. But it was his uh, original was his notion idea. of the Mac. I, you know, there's a certain purity when these things get tested in the real world, and so if Jay yep. Allard's right, um, who knows? Maybe this is not huge. Look, <laughs> it doesn't matter. If you want to see it, Leo, look look for Tapose on the web. There's a video of them, and it looks a lot like the courier, um, except minus the stylus, I believe. Huh. They even uh, say and, the and word I, they even say the word courier in on their web page. Yep. In fact, they that's do. Real. And when I when I tweeted about them this week, the one of the founders tweeted me back and said, Hey, maybe we will do one for Windows 8 tablets. So maybe this courier app will come to Windows 8. So also. um well, this is interesting. So this all goes on the iPad uh, UI on top of it. And it's a Kickstarter project. Yep. Huh. So where's the uh, where's the video? Is it... Um... I think it's um, somewhere on 
Yeah. More about us, if you see that. Oh, okay, let's somewhere. go about about us. Yeah, let's see if they have a video there. Yeah. Split interface design. This is the courier. Isn't that <laughs> funny? Maybe it's on the yeah. Kickstarter. I bet it's on the Kickstarter project. Yeah, but I think it's on the Kickstarter. So they, they had a goal of is. 10. They got 26 so thousand twelve hundred backers they they raised the money they wanted to raise so that's exactly as much money as this device will make so that's you know why idea. this guy's doing it because <laughs> connect can't see him i'm sorry i shouldn't say that. yikes <laughs> <laughs> wow he's angry and i would be too so let's see you know there's a big thing going on about mike errington being a racist because he basically got 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 uh, ambushed by cnn mm -hmm. um that the that documentary comes out i think in the next couple of days and I never would have thought this, but I am actually starting to feel sorry for, my, for, for Mike, Mike Arrington. I don't know that I could feel sorry for Mike Arrington. You know, Why would happen? <laughs> so uh, CN, uh, CNN said that, well, we want to do an interview about startups in Silicon Valley. Of course, this was back when Mike was with the TechCrunch and doing Disrupt and all that stuff. And they interviewed him. Yep. But what they didn't tell him ahead of time was the interview is all going to be about why there are no African-American or minorities or Hispanics uh, in this in the startup area. And they... Although and they there are, in fact, Bitcasa, which is a huge, he's an investor and a big supporter of, has an African-American founder. And, uh, and, but they took a quote out of context. And that's well, I saw, you know, so Soledad O'Brien, who was a reporter. And I worked with Soledad for years, and I love yep. Soledad. Yep. She published the e emails that they sent to Arrington, and it was not an ambush. Well, okay. But Mike says that email wasn't sent to him or his assistant, as the previous emails were. It was sent to AOL. He never saw that email, and it was only one paragraph in a much longer thing. So, I mean, I think that he has, I'm kind of, I'm the, and, you know, the only thing that he, that they use is the thing where he says, I can't think of any uh, African-American founders or minority founders in uh, Silicon Valley. And then later he says in the interview, I remember, oh, yeah, wait a minute, what am I thinking? There's Bitcasa. Uh, you know, so, I mean, I am not a guy who, uh, by the way, there were, I was watching this Tapaze video. There's no, in this video, it's just two guys talking the whole time. Oh, it is? Oh, uh, yeah. I, saw, I saw one where there was a picture of it working somewhere. They have a, but, sorry. check out our very funny Tapoze skit. <laughs> oh, boy. Here's uh -oh. the skit. Is this what you're thinking about, the skit? Uh, I don't think I don't know. Really a, a skit <laughs> scene. But I have to get this off my chest. My friend Ben is crazy. I mean, loony Ben, cuckoo crazy. I hope these guys get the money, speaking of cuckoo crazy, oh. and make a courier. See, he's got a little paper courier in his... Oh, there's nothing lame about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I had one of these. This they got twenty grand on their Kickstarter project. For this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is this is cute. I hope they get the money. I'd love to this see. This is what it. happens when the United States has ten percent unemployment. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Entrepreneurs make videos <laughs> like this. You know, what, you know, these guys who um, are founding this, they actually work for Boeing. Um, you're they're, kidding. They're, they're no, like they're engineers. engineers at Boeing in Seattle. Yeah. Uh, well, I could see, you know, I could see somebody looking at the, those original Microsoft Courier videos and saying, I'd love to have something like that, especially yep. especially an engineer who's doing that kind of work. That might make a lot of sense. Uh, it makes no sense. No sense. You know, you're right. We'll and we'll by see. the way, <laughs> Apple will never approve this app. Not a, not a hope in hell. <laughs> no, really. You know why? Because it's, a, it's a windowed interface. What an what an awful outcome that would be. They there's not a chance because it changes the UI. I don't I can't think of a single case. So what what like for instance they want to bring up on the left side of the screen maps and on the right side another app. Yep. Apple's never approved anything anywhere near that. Maybe they will because who knows. <sighs> so but I do think that that's a, I I did read uh, Jay Green's uh, article and I thought it was very telling and interesting. I love this stuff like the behind the scenes of what really happened. I think that's great. So speaking of Xbox, mm -hmm. Paul says mm -hmm. there may be a new Xbox there will be. Works. Project 10. Well actually the interesting thing about it is what I'm hearing is it's going to come out for uh, holidays uh, next year. Uh-huh. Meaning that they would almost have to announce this at CES, wouldn't they? Yeah. You know, if it's that soon. Ooh. And so that's my, uh, that's my rumor, is that I expect that, that we'll, we'll hear something about and that. And it'll be but, Metro? Yeah, all Metro, um, embedded Silverlight, which I don't understand what that even means, but that's what I was told. And that they were going the Apple route where they wanted this thing to integrate very tightly with Windows 8 and with Windows Phone. 
And, you know, this is a, actually a problem with the current Xbox. Um, as they've updated the UI, they really haven't done a lot to update the integration bits. You know, you still navigate your home network in a very old-fashioned way if you want to get at content that's on one of your PCs or whatever. And it's it's always been very disturbing to me. You know, if you have a an iPhone or an iPod Touch and you plug it into a, an Xbox 360 today, you can access the media that's on that device and play it through the Xbox onto your TV. But if you have a, a Windows phone and you plug it into your Xbox, it does nothing. It doesn't, it right. can't see the device, it can't copy, you know, or uh, play any of the content, it can't do anything. Um, and so it's, you know, this is a, the, the integration bit is, is the piece that Microsoft has always done poorly and I, I, apparently they intend to fix that with this yeah, next version. I mean, it's widely Xbox. believed this was the secret to Apple's success was they had end-to-end -end integration of all their products and that you entered the Apple universe and never came out. Yeah. The other, the other thing we're starting to see is, you know, when you look at these uh, modern video games, you know, um, the new Call of Duty is coming out next week, but games like Battlefield or um, Gears of War 3, you know, they're, they're attractive looking, but they're, they're not actually any better than the games, better looking than the games that came out a year ago and are significantly less good looking than their PC alternatives because PCs of course can have higher resolutions and uh, there's a lot more tweaking of the UI in games where you can you know set detail levels and do all that kind of thing. I, I think we've reached the point where the current generation Xbox has topped out with what's possible. You know that developers spent years uh, figuring out ways to eke out more and more performance mm -hmm. and better mm -hmm. graphics and all that and and now we have kind of reached the apex like there's nowhere else to go. End of the line. It's, yeah, and yeah. so new Xbox uh, is coming. Although yeah. the, the, you're still going to get the dashboard update for the existing Xbox, right? That's. You know how yeah. I know a new Xbox is coming? I, 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 I just bought one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, how I know. I just, I'm yeah. looking at it right now. It's not even out of the box. Paul, you know, when you mentioned the Silverlight connection, oh, it's making me think it, that um, that has to do with the Xbox Live for TV stuff. Right. Because... That's okay. supposedly built uh, around and using Silverlight, um, oh, so like and that's going to be part of this dashboard silver. update. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I love okay. this. I mean, I, 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 that's that's a product. Yeah. That's a product. It's gaming, but it's uh, it's television integration. Um, interesting. Yeah, yeah, so the dashboard the, updates, uh, the, the um, I guess people who signed up for the preview that are going to get it in the next couple of days, the dashboard update okay. test And what about the rest version. of us? The rest of us? 2003. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I, I believe also it's being delivered in in uh, over time. You know, there, there's a there's an update we're getting now, but I think there's one coming in the spring that will be that final version of the you know the one they've been showing that looks like Windows 8. I don't think we're getting that until next year, but this dashboard update that's coming now, I think, is um, more around the media stuff and the ability for you know for to do the internet, TV, and all that. Cool. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what they uh, what they've done. I mean, uh, you know. Uh, every TV in my home has an Xbox hooked up to it. Some of them aren't. Yeah, we have so many Xboxes yeah. in my house. Yeah. It's almost embarrassing. But Let's take a break. We're going to get your picks coming up in just a bit, but I want to do some picks right now for Audible.com. Audible, of course, you know Audible. We talk about Audible all the time. It is the audio bookstore I, I practically live in. You know, we just got an update on the number of Audible uh, titles. 100,000. 100,000. They're just uh, new titles all the time, partly because every book publisher now realizes you got to do an audio version of your book, uh, but also because Audible themselves have been going back to the catalog and recording great audio editions of classics, science fiction books that were never recorded. That's part of their Frontiers series and more. If you're not yet an Audible member, please go to audible.com slash windows and uh, check it out because it is, it is just, uh, I, I, can't, I can't say enough for Audible. I listen, uh, I have the Audible app on my iPhone and Android phone. Someday soon, we believe, Windows Mobile, Windows Phone 7 will have it. Um, you can, of, of course, download the uh, audiobooks as well and play it back on many devices, including your computer. Uh, I am just a big Audible fan. I'm listening right now to the Jobs biography. Almost done with that. And, and the reason I could finish a biography that's that long in a little more than a week is because of Audible. I listen in the car, I listen at the gym, I listen when I'm cleaning house, I listen when I'm going to bed. I love it. But your recommendation, Paul, is actually uh, another book that I, I'm putting on my list now. This is uh, the book about Jeff Bezos. Are, are you reading this right now? I am. It's not very long. I can get through this one in a day or two. It's only five hours and uh, 39 minutes. Yeah, it's not... Um, 
he's not as interesting a character as Steve Jobs in many ways. Um, but I, I think it's fair to say that he will influence the tech industry that. in ways that are maybe, you know, some, somewhere as and, profound, somewhere and, near as profound. And he is a difficult character. I mean, he's in some, you know, a lot of these he's entrepreneurs. He's the, the anti-Jobs in many yeah, ways, yeah. right? Right. Che you know, he's very cheap. Um, he, he, you know, he, he thinks in a very uh, um, kind of a logical fashion, I would say, rather than uh, an intuitive right kind of emotional fashion like Steve Jobs does. So interesting contrast. They're, they're very interesting books to read back to back uh, yes. because they're so different. And yet they both uh, sort of have lorded over the tech industry in some ways. Um, and it's, it's interesting, you know, it's sort of like uh, Gates and, and Jobs, you know, that there's a, a different approaches you can take and uh, that can be equally successful. So this is very interesting, very timely. Richard Brandt, who also wrote a book called Inside Larry and Sergey's Brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, he's, this is uh, not new. But these are short reads, quick reads, which is nice. Uh, sometimes after reading a book that's uh, as long as the Jobs book, you want something, a quick hit. And that's the beauty of Audible. There's a huge variety of business books, classics, fiction, history, kids books too oh it's great for the kids audible if you're not a member audible.com slash windows you'll be signing up for the gold account that's a book a month your first month's free your first book is free and yours to keep forever cancel at any time but i don't think you're going to want to cancel there's so many new john grisham yay lots of great stuff here mindy kaling uh, uh of uh the office fame she has a new book is everyone hanging out without me and other concerns I got to play a little of this because I love Mindy Kaling. She she narrates part part of this anyway. Back. Chubby for life. <laughs> I don't remember a time when I wasn't chubby. Like being Indian, if, being it, chubby feels like it is just part of my permanent deal. <laughs> I remember being in first grade in Mrs. Gilmore's class. At People don't know that Mindy Kaling, who is a, as a kind of a, you know kind of a smaller character on The Office, is actually one of The Office's best writers and producers. Yep. Um. Gosh, there's so many good things on here. Sometimes you're in the mood for a laugh. Sometimes you're in the mood to get serious. Sometimes you're in the mood to learn. But Audible's got something for every mood. Join today, audible.com slash windows. And we thank them for their support for Windows Weekly. Okay, Paul, let's see here. We got tips. We got picks. Let's start with our software pick of the week. This sounds more like a Mary Jo than a... Paul Thurot. <laughs> you know, it's such an awful name, isn't it? Took that one. Yeah, Mary Jo wants this one, <laughs> Paul. Hey, you can have the enterprise. I, I get small business. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's, Mary Jo, he's nibbling away at your beat. He is. Yeah. I don't like this. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Now, this is something I've been waiting for for a long time, ever since I saw it uh, demoed back at TechEd. And it, what it is is an add-in. I guess, is it add-in or add-on? I think it's add-in for Windows Small Business Server 2011 Essentials. Remember, which that's the, uh, the home server-based version of Small Business Server, which is really stripped down. There's not a lot going on there in the server itself, but they have various add-ins that extend the functionality. And one of the big ones we've been waiting for is this Office 365 integration module. It does all kinds of different things, but it lets you manage your Office 365 account from within the Small Business Server dashboard, but also integrate your accounts back and forth. So when you create a user in Small Business Server, it, they become a user uh, up in Office 365 as well for your email uh, that is an exchange, you know, contacts, calendaring, uh, the SharePoint and all the link stuff. So it's, a, it's, a, it's sort of an all-in-one integration uh, dashboard or integration point into the dashboard so you can do everything from a single place. So that's in beta now and uh, hopefully the final version won't be too long but we, we, we've been waiting for this for you know six months so I'm glad to finally see this happen and hopefully this will be a big deal for a small business server. There's also an update uh, for your software pick of the week for Windows Phone to the uh, Facebook app. Yeah, you may recall, you know, back when Windows Phone first came out, I did a Windows Phone app pick every week for a long time. And I did that because, you know, it was a new platform and you wanted, I wanted to highlight uh, the apps that uh, were particularly good. And one of the really good early ones that we, we probably had as a pick a year ago was Facebook. And Facebook on Windows Phone is a, is a really good app. Um, it wasn't actually created by Microsoft, but Microsoft uh, paid a company to make it. Now Microsoft maintains it in uh, cohorts with, um, with Facebook themselves. So... Obviously, Facebook is moving forward. There's a new version of Facebook that just came out on the iPad, and the mobile apps have been improving. So uh, they recently released a Facebook 2.0 for Windows Phone, and this is the first one that has some um, uh, mango-type features uh, via push notifications out to the toast. Uh, with the toast notifications you get from the top and also on the tiles. 
uh, on the on the on the application tile for the first time. You know, if you if you've been using Facebook and Windows Phone for a while, you know that you get a big blue uh, F and it just is static and it sits here, but not, no, it just does nothing. It's, it's not better a than the big blue F U. Yeah, yes. yeah. But it's but now they have um, now they have push notifications. On I like I I really love these live tiles in Mango. I think this is great. But it does require yeah, so Mango it, to do that though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Actually, you know what? That's I'm not sure about that. But, uh, but most people. Most people are going to get mango. I'm actually yeah. not sure if it requires mango, uh, to be honest. But I only have mango now, so I'm not, I don't really have any way right. to figure that out. But. Right. Facebook, it's free. Get it. Does mm -hmm. it update the People Hub too, or that that's? No, I mean the, the the People Hub integration is built into Mango, so that stuff's all right. already there. In the, this is just for the standalone. Just for the standalone. Yeah. And now Mary Jo Foley, who gets truly a a true enterprise product. That brings intelligence <laughs> to your computer. It does. Actually, so, to your SQL Server. Indeed. Yeah. So SQL Server 2012 um, that I've talked about on a couple of our previous episodes, um, we didn't really know what kind of SKUs Microsoft was going to have when they came out with this. And we found out today, in fact, that they're going to have one that they've never had before called the BI, Business Intelligence SKU. Um, so this is really interesting for people who are all into uh, so, uh, analytics. Um, this is a, a SKU that highlights all the new BI tools that they've got coming out with this release early next year. Um, and they also talked today um, on the Microsoft website about how they're going to be pricing SQL Server 2012, which uh, I think caught some people by surprise because they're moving from uh, Server plus Cal, which is client access license uh, pricing to core based licensing for some of their SKUs. Now, the BI SKU is not going to have the core based licensing, so you're not paying per core um, uh, of, as to how many cores you have on your, on your server. But um, the other SKUs, enterprise and standard, are going more towards the core um, core based pricing, especially the enterprise. That's the only way you're going to be able to buy it. So, if you're interested in SQL Server, go check out uh, the post I did today about how they're pricing and packaging up SQL Server 2012. Did they announce a release date for that? Uh, they've said uh, the early part of 2012. That's it. Like March? Yeah, maybe. Well, like January, <laughs> like, like April. Think of March. I think it's going to be like March. March? Think of March. March. Yeah. March. Yeah. <laughs> think, think March. March. Okay, March. 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 <laughs> March. I wasn't sure if they announced it. But. So, no, they have I think it's going to be March. Mary so. Jo... <laughs> Mary Jo has I also... I man. <laughs> Good. You heard it here first. Mary Jo mm. also has a, uh, a code name pick of the week. My One of my favorite cities. One of mine, too, there, where I will be in two weeks. Um, Vancouver is the code name pick of the week. And this actually has been a previous code name pick of the week of mine. But I brought it up again this week because finally it came out. Um, you know, no, Microsoft wasn't even talking about what it was. Uh, but this week, if you go to the SQL Server Labs site on Microsoft, you can download what's called Codename Social Analytics. I don't know why uh. Social Analytics is a code name, mm. but um, what it does, it, so what it is, is um, a tool that lets you um, integrate in Twitter, Facebook, um, blog, RSS feed, uh, all these kinds of social inputs, and integrate them into your business app, and then do an analysis um, of what they mean. So they have a client that looks a lot, a lot, a lot like TweetDeck that's part of the product. Um, and they've got some built-in um, sentiment engine that Ooh. Microsoft Research developed. So it's, it's pretty interesting. I love you. It's, it, that's like, that you know, when you... No, like when you read when you read tweets, are they more right. negative or positive, right? right? right. <laughs> That's actually very challenging, very difficult to do. Yes, yeah. very difficult. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is right now just in a preview form, and we don't know when it's going to be out in final form, but this is what Vancouver is, and now you can go get the bits if you're interested in seeing where Microsoft's going with cloud-based social analytics. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> I Just in case you're interested in that, Paul. <laughs> I have no idea. What, what is she talking about, Paul? You see, I'm so glad I you're on the show. Of... <laughs> I, I would be unable to talk about this. That's just fascinating. Uh, Mary Jo Foley writes about this stuff all the time. And, you know, if, you're, uh, if you are not a Mary Jo Foley reader, you really ought to be. Her blog, allaboutmicrosoft.com, updated Gosh darn it, every five minutes, it seems like. She wrote three posts during this show. 
uh, all about <laughs> Microsoft.com. <laughs> Practically did. Uh, and uh, you must go there. You also have to go to the Super Site for Windows. That's Paul Therott's website, winsupersite.com. He's also news editor for Windows IT Pro and the author of the fabulous Inside series, including Inside, not Inside, that's oh, different, oh, 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 Windows oh. Secret <laughs> series, including Windows Phone Secrets. I guess you can't trademark secrets. Anybody could write know. a book called Secrets. You think? Yeah. It, you know, Twit Podcast Secrets. Leo's not wearing any clothes or something. I don't, I don't like it. I don't, I don't want it. I don't like it. And I don't have to do it, says Paul Thoreau. Right. I do like what Microsoft's doing with uh, patents. Could... Yeah. Yeah, That's Sue. Mutually assured destruction. Sue. Yeah. Well, we're a little worried because, you know, we're doing this new gaming show starting a couple of weeks with uh, Veronica Belmont and Brian Brushwood. And uh, it's been hard to pick a name. And sure. I find and I love the name Game On. It's positive. It's upbeat. It has the word game in it. You know, I mean, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is an Australian podcast about table games called Game On. You know, uh, dice and Dungeons and Dragons, that kind of thing. Magic, the Gathering. Sure. So I thought, well, golly, am I, you know, first of all, I know you well, can't. You know, those guys don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No, but that's not how I was thinking. No, I, just, no, of course not. I was thinking, is this going to conflict? Will this confuse people? And I think it's not. I mean, it's a podcast, but I don't think, it, I think people will understand. That they're different. Oh, they're different, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll make a deal with those Aussies. We will not cover table gaming. So there. There you go. This is like the deal Apple made with Apple Corp back in the early 1980s. We promise we will not <sighs> yeah. make any music no products. Music. And, you know, I, boy, again, more revelations for this book. So they, they paid Apple Corps $80,000 to license the name Apple way yep. back when. Gave them an investment. Yeah, and said, well, wait a minute, and said... We won't make music things. And, of course, then they did do iTunes and became one of the biggest players in the music industry. Apple Corps yep. came back and sued. $100 million it cost them to settle that lawsuit. I'm surprised it didn't cost them more than that. <laughs> I know. Oh, seriously. I mean, that actually iTunes is a good deal. Is a deal. Maybe, did I get that right? No, I'm sorry. $500 million. It was half a billion yep. dollars. $500 million. Half sure. a billion dollars. Dollars. Paul, I want you to be part of our LAN party uh, when we okay. start. You know, the name of the show is Game On. That's and then, fine, but it has to be Xbox 360. Yeah, no, we, that's why I bought the Xbox 360. We're going to have the okay. server. And uh, we also, you know, well, sometimes it's PC gaming, sometimes console, sometimes both. Uh, and the name of the uh, LAN party show is Shut Up and Play, which I mm -hmm. think is a good name. And nobody has yep. for reasons I can't understand. So join. I will embarrass whoever you wish. <laughs> Fragtastic. <laughs> Actually, we're going to have uh, we'll, we're we're going to set up the uh, the a uh, big TV and the uh, connect in the living room set mm -hmm. because uh, I think that's when you know we'll we'll I'll be playing Dance Central too while you guys are fragging each other. <laughs> wow, wow, that's the ga that's the gamut right there. Right there, we're running the gamut. I'm going to do a casual gaming segment called Casual Encounters with Leo. I'll be racking up headshots, and you'll be <laughs> hey, doing something ladies. else. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, thank you. Thank you all for joining us. We do this show every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC at twit.tv. Please tune in live, but if you can't, we always have downloads for you, audio and video available uh, wherever fine podcasts are, uh, including the Zoom Marketplace, iTunes, and, of course, at twit.tv, where you can subscribe. Do subscribe. That way you'll get them all. And uh, thank you so much, guys. We'll see you next week on Windows Weekly.